Have you ever wondered how the magic behind Unreal Engine's build process works? In this video I will show you an overview about the Unreal build process and why Visual Studio is sometimes so incredibly wrong with its error messages. First, we will talk about modules in Unreal Engine and then we will talk about the Unreal Engine build pipeline and how it relates to Visual Studio, including the Unreal header tool, the Unreal build tool and all the files needed by them. Modules in Unreal Engine represent logical groups of code and assets that can be developed and maintained separately. Each module encapsulates specific functionalities, promoting code reusability and organization. Developers can create custom modules containing classes, functions and assets, which allows us a more structured and modular approach to game development. These modules can be easily shared between different projects, enhancing collaboration and project scalability. If we look into the engine source code folder, we can see that Unreal consists of many different modules, organized in different folders. For example, modules of the Unreal Editor itself, such as the Content Browser, or modules used during runtime, such as the AI module. While game development, we will use any number of modules to create our game. Those modules might already come together with the Unreal Engine installation, or might be developed by ourselves or third-party suppliers. In our project later, we will glue those modules together and add further functionality. When building our project, for example for the Unreal Editor, each module gets compiled into a single DLL file, and those DLL files get loaded by the Unreal Editor.exe. So now that we know at least something about modules, let's jump right into the build pipeline and see how it compiles our modules. To explain the build process, we will only focus on the files and modules inside of the project directory structure. If a project gets compiled, for example, by clicking on the build button inside of Visual Studio, basically the Unreal Build Tool.exe gets called together with some parameters. We can see this call also in the command line output of Visual Studio when clicking on Compile. Instead of the normal build process, Unreal Engine uses its very own cross-platform build system on top of Microsoft Visual C++. To understand why Unreal is doing this, let's have a look onto the Unreal build pipeline. Here we can see a high-level overview. After the Unreal Build Tool was started, it scans for available modules. The Unreal Build Tool, or short UBT, finds the modules by a combination of going through the directory structure of our project on a hard drive and by looking into the uProject file. While going through the directory structure, UBT will look for any build.cs file inside the subdirectories of the source folder. A project can have multiple modules. Each module need to be in its own folder under source and must specify its own build.cs file. On the root level of our project, we can see the uProject file. It contains a list of all modules to be built. More details about the individual files later. After scanning the modules, UBT checks if any module needs to be rebuilt. If a module needs to be rebuilt, UBT checks for generated header files as well as for Unreal macros such as U-Class or U-Property. If engine-specific macros are present, the Unreal Build Tool invokes the so-called Unreal Header Tool. The Unreal Header Tool, or short UHT, then generates additional C++ code based on those macros. One important purpose of the Unreal Macro is to establish the concept of a so-called reflection, which is mainly the ability of a program to examine itself. For example, to access its own properties by name. Normally, C++ does not provide reflection out of the box. So that we don't need to write a lot of code for reflection by ourselves, the Unreal Header tool does all the heavy lifting for us. You might already have seen the .generated.h files. Those are files generated by the UHT. Sometimes, if you haven't compiled your code yet, Visual Studio might provide error messages to you, which are because the generated code is still missing and Visual Studio can't handle that always. 
So the reason why Visual Studio sometimes shows wrong error messages to us is because a lot of code gets generated only after UHT was invoked. Even after code generation, Visual Studio seems to have problems with updating its IntelliSense. So the best you can do is to wait, restart Visual Studio or just to learn which errors you can safely ignore. After the additional code was generated, UBT compiles the C++ code by invoking the normal compiler and creates the binaries. If you want to read more about the Unreal Build tool and the Unreal Header tool, the link is in the description. UBT does not use the normal build process of Visual Studio. It also does not use the Visual Studio solution file for the build process. And that means it doesn't care about the structure visible in Visual Studio. Here's another example that a Visual Studio project structure has no impact on the build process. When deleting, for example, a source code file directly in Visual Studio, but not removing it from the directory structure, it has no effect. The source code file just gets compiled as before when running the UBT. If you regenerate the Visual Studio project files, you will see that the file magically appears again in the Visual Studio project structure. So which structure is actually important? It's the structure the Unreal Build tool follows. And that's mainly based on the U project file and the module folder structure of your project. Let's have a closer look on these files. Let's start with the U project file. The U project file is like a manifest that describes the contents of our project. It contains essential information about our project, its settings and its modules. Let's have a look on the properties. The file version property indicates the format version of the uProject file itself, and that's mainly important for Unreal to know how to parse the file. The engine association property specifies the version of the Unreal editor. That's the version to open our project with. The category property is optional, you can provide any category you like to organize your projects. The description property allows you to provide a brief description or summary of your project. The modules property contains a list of all modules that belong to the project. This will tell UBT which modules to compile. Don't confuse this list with the dependencies between modules, which we will talk about later when talking about the build.cs file. The plugin section contains a list of all plugins to be loaded for your project. We haven't talked about plugins yet. The concept of plugins is not fully necessary to understand the build process, therefore I will skip them in this video. Let's have a closer look on the properties of the module entry. The name property describes the name of the module. It should be the name of the module as we can find it in the folder structure. The type property specifies the type of the module. Based on a target, the type indicates whether a module shall be loaded on a given target or not. For example, the type runtime loads on both a standalone game target as well as on an editor target. And the type editor only loads on an editor target. If you want to read more about the module types, you can follow the link in the description. The loading phase property tells the engine when to load which module in which order. By default, a module gets loaded while the engine initializes, but after the main game module was loaded. If we choose pre-default, our module gets loaded before the main game module. If we choose post-default, our module gets loaded after the engine was initialized. If you want to read more about the loading phases, you can follow the link in the description. Let's move on to the build.cs file. As we already learned, each module must have its own build.cs file. The build.cs file is prefixed with the name of the module. So for example, mymodule.build.cs. As we can see, the build file is not a C++ file, it's a C-sharp file used by UBT. That's also the reason why we had to install the .NET framework when installing Visual Studio. Inside the build file, we can see a class with the name of the module. From UBT's point of view, this class represents the module and contains its build rules. Inside the constructor of the class, we can set values on different properties to configure the build. 
For example, we can add dependencies to other modules by using the two arrays public dependency module names and private dependency module names. In order to be able to use functionality of other modules inside of our module, we have to declare dependencies in one of the two arrays. For example, if we want to use UMG to create custom widgets in our module, we have to set a dependency to UMG and maybe also to Slate and Slate Core. If we decide to put them into public or private, mainly depends on if we want to share those dependencies with others outside of our module or not. There are many other module properties that can be specified inside of the build file, so if you want to read more about module properties, the link is as always in the description. Last but not least, let's talk about the target.cs file. We can't talk about the build process without talking about build targets. Build targets are declared through a C -sharp file and are stored under your project's root directory. Each target has its own target.cs file with the target name as its prefix. To understand what targets are, let's look at some possible values. There are many different target types such as game, client, server, editor and program. The target game is the target for a standalone game we can ship to our customers. It does not load modules of the type editor. As you remember, we saw that already inside of the uProject file, where the module type specified whether a module shall be loaded on a specific target or not. And game is in this example the target. The target client is basically the same like game, but without any module of type server only. The target server is basically the same like game again, but without any module of type client only. The target editor is basically the same as game, but also loads the editor modules. The target program is something I haven't seen or used so far. So if you know more about the target program, please let me know in the comments. Beside the target type, there's also a so-called target platform, which is the operating system or platform we are building the game for. So for example, we could switch inside the target configuration on the actual target platform to load different extra modules. If you want to read more about build targets, you can follow the link in the description. And that's it. We've learned about a custom build pipeline of Unreal Engine and know the basics about the uProject files and the different configurations such as build.cs and target.cs. I hope I was able to shed some light on this and the next time you'll click on compile in Visual Studio, you'll understand a little bit better what's going on. If you learned something and want to see more tutorials about game development, as usual, like, subscribe, share and ring the bell. Any bit helps. Thanks for watching.